Basil's Church on the campus of the University of St. Michael's College in downtown Toronto, the National Catholic Broadcasting Council presents Daily Mass. The televising of today's Mass is made possible by a contribution from three donors. The first is Vivian Runge and family from Edmonton, Alberta, in memory of her husband, Alexander, who died on November 20, 2005. The second is an anonymous donor from Winnipeg, Manitoba, for family and for those suffering from cancer. The third are the members of the Wetaskiwin Knights of Columbus Sacred Heart Council 6839 in Wetaskiwin, Alberta. Our thanks to our donors for the gift of this Mass. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. Amen. Today we celebrate the Mass for Tuesday. As we continue on with this liturgy, let us be mindful of our faults and failings. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. My Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who manifest your almighty power above all by pardoning and showing mercy, bestow, we pray, your grace abundantly upon us, and make those hastening to attain your promises heirs to the treasures of heaven. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the letter of Paul to Titus. Teach what is consistent with sound doctrine. Tell the older men to be temperate, serious, prudent, and sound in faith, in love, and in endurance. Likewise, tell the older women to be reverent in behavior, not to be slanderers or slaves to drink. They are to teach what is good, so that they may encourage the young women to love their husbands, to love their children, to be self-controlled, chaste, good managers of the household, kind, being submissive to their husbands, so that the word of God may not be discredited. Likewise, urge the younger men to be self-controlled. Show yourself in all respects a model of good works, and in your teaching show integrity, gravity, and sound speech that cannot be censured, then any opponent will be put to shame, having nothing evil to say of us. For the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to all, training us to renounce impiety and worldly passions, and in the present age to live lives that are self-controlled, upright, and godly. While we wait for the blessed hope and the manifestation of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. He, it is who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify for himself a people of his own who are zealous for good deeds. The word of the Lord. The salvation of the just comes from the Lord. The salvation of the just comes from the Lord. Trust in the Lord and do so you will live in the land and enjoy security. Take delight in the Lord. And- 
and he will give you the desires of your heart. The salvation of the just comes from the Lord. The Lord knows the days of the blameless, and their heritage will abide forever. Our steps are made firm by the Lord when he delights in our way. The salvation of the just comes from the Lord. Depart from evil and do so you shall abide forever. The righteous shall inherit the land and live in it forever. The salvation of the just comes from my words, and my Father will love them, and we will come to them. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus said to the disciples, Who among you would say to your slave, who has just come in from plowing or tending sheep in the field, Come here at once and take your place at the table? Would you not rather say to him, Prepare supper for me, Put on your apron and serve me while I eat and drink. Later you may eat and drink. Do you thank the slave for doing what was commanded? So you also, when you have done all that you were ordered to do, say, We are worthless slaves. We have done only what we ought to have done. The Gospel of the Lord. Today's first reading seems to be answering the questions, what does a Christian look like? How does a Christian act? How does one recognize a follower of Christ? Someone once described character as what a person is when he or she thinks no one is looking. The author of today's first reading has moved on from describing the virtues that priests and bishops should exhibit to detailing the virtues that should be evident in the lives of various Christians. Notice that this is not one size fits all. Age and marital status call for emphasis on certain virtues. The goal for all Christians is, however, the same, living out the good news that they confess with their lips. Similar lists are found in non-Christian writings of this period. Our biblical writer supplies an added motivation. They prepare us to live honorably until Christ returns. Whether young or old, male or female, 
we hear a description of the ideal Christian. The best news is the last sentence, which begins with these words, For the grace of God has appeared. We tend to get caught up in the early descriptions of conduct, examining our own behavior, wondering how we measure up. I am pretty good at this. This is one of my faults. I always struggle with that. We miss the good news here. The behavior and attitudes, the external changes, are a result of the transformation we have experienced in opening our hearts and welcoming God's grace. They are the outcome of the internal changes. How did we get this message turned around? We focus on our behavior and berate ourselves for missteps and faults, always trying to fix the outside to reshape ourselves to fit the ideal image to make sure we measure up, rather than allowing God's grace to continually permeate us, transforming us from the inside. The Gospel reading further develops this truth. The good that we do, the ways we serve each other, all the ways we give of ourselves and our gifts, we do this not in expectation of some reward, but because this is now our nature. This is who we are transformed in Christ. Again, somewhere along the way, we turn this around to thinking we will like ourselves better and feel better about ourselves if we act in the ways that get us the rewards of recognition, praise, status, a raise, or whatever else we think motivates us. Our transformed life is the reward. It is not external to us, not a fleeting feeling or transient title or trophy. Christianity had enough problems in the first century. As a tiny minority within a pagan world, it did not need to give people reason to complain that Christians sounded good when they spoke, but were apparently not convinced enough by this Jesus to live in a truly admirable way. Like it or not, we are all preaching 24-7 by what we accept as normal, by what we describe as no big deal. When words and deeds are in conflict, people will always trust the deeds more. For those who have mended their clothes, arts and crafts with sewing stuff animals or quilting, one of the things that I have learned is that my sewing is much more accurate if I keep my eye on where I want the needle to go, not on the needle as fascinating as that is to watch as those perfectly formed stitches are laid down. This same principle is true in markmanship. You keep your eye on the target, not the bullet nor the arrow. It is the same in the spiritual life, such as the saints who kept their eyes on God, not their own successes, and failure. It is that kind of focus that let us allow, or that allows us to continue day after day through the challenges of life and not be discouraged, but be continually converted and transformed. As we hold our gaze on Christ, not our own footsteps, our hearts are also transformed.
Having been nourished by the word of God, let us faithfully bring to him our needs. That our church leaders may always call upon the Holy Spirit to help them live as models of holiness for us to imitate. Let us pray. That civic leaders may serve with humility and be examples of virtue. Let us pray. That we thank for, for God's mercy may live lives faithful to the gospel. Let us pray. That those in need, the sick, the poor, the unemployed, may find in a church services to meet their needs. Let us pray. That those who have died in Christ may now live in him. Let us pray. Lord God, provider of all blessings, we praise you for your gifts to us, I ask that you hear our prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant us, O merciful God, that this our offering may find acceptable with you, and that through it the wellspring of all blessing may be laid open before us, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in goodness you created us, and when he was justly condemned in mercy, you redeemed him through Christ our Lord. Through him, the angels praise your majesty. Dominions adore and powers tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim worship together with exultation. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in humble praise as we acclaim. Indeed, holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Benedict, our Pope, and Thomas, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and within and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, and just say, Lord, my soul shall be
Will those of you at home join with me now in this prayer for courage? Grant me, O Lord, the strength to be who I must be, to do what I must do. Give me the courage to stand strong against my fears and have the will to express my feelings and needs. Help me realize that I have the power to change, no matter what anyone tells me, because of you. Give me the faith I need to believe in you always, even when it seems you're not there. I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us pray. May this heavenly mystery, O Lord, restore us in mind and body, that we may be co-heirs in glory with Christ, to whose suffering we are united whenever we proclaim his death, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. My Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Mass has ended. Let us go in peace to love and serve our Lord. Amen. Our thanks to three donors. First is Vivian Runge and family from Edmonton, Alberta. The second, an anonymous donor from Winnipeg, Manitoba. And the third are the members of the Wetaskiwin Knights of Columbus Sacred Heart Council 6839 in Wetaskiwin, Alberta. And it's their generous contributions that made the televising of today's Mass possible. We'd like to make it as easy as possible for you to send us a donation. If you'd like us to send you prepaid postage envelopes, just call our office at one 888 Three eight three sixty two seventy seven.